I want to talk from the subject tonight when God wants your attention. When God wants your attention. Beloved, in Exodus chapter number two, Moses does what many of us secretly desire and privately ponder. In Exodus chapter two, Moses walks away from life in a moment. In a moment, he leaves everything he has known. He leaves the only land, the only position he has known. And in chapter number two, Moses runs away. Moses was done with Egypt. And, and when you read the narrative of Moses, we discover that not only was Moses done with Egypt, Moses was done with God. And, and perhaps tonight I'm, I'm talking to some people who, 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 though you're still involved in the church, though you're still here tonight, if, if the truth be told tonight, that there's some people under the sound of my voice who have been done with religion. That there's some people in, in, in this place tonight that, that if you're honest with yourself, you're on the verge of walking away. Or maybe tonight I'm talking to some people that you come to church, you, you, you come to church because it is your tradition. You come to church because your parents make you come to church. But in your heart, there is not a fondness for the things of God. In your heart, you are tired of your relationship with God. And the moment you get the chance, you're ready to walk away. You're sitting in the pew, but in your heart, you've already taken steps. And maybe you, you feel that way because like Moses, you can look at your past and you can see that there's some mistakes in your past. And maybe you feel like Moses that the mistakes in your past cannot be overcome. Or maybe like Moses tonight, you feel as if you, 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 the people you trusted in, the people that you thought were going to have your back were the very people that betrayed you and some of those people come to church. And so you're through with church, you're through with God, you're through with religion. And like Moses, you're ready to walk away. Well, whoever you are tonight, I don't know who you are, but whoever you are, I want you to know tonight that though you might be through with God, God is not through with you. And that's really the truth of the text. The truth of this text is that God wants your attention. And when God wants your attention, God will do whatever he has to do in order to draw you closer to himself. That's the, that's the fact of the text. The text teaches us that when God wants our attention, God will show up wherever we are. Look, look at Moses. Moses is far away from Egypt. Moses is far from the palace that he grew up in. Moses is far from luxury and far from royalty. Moses is in the middle of the wilderness on the backside of the mountain. He is in the middle of nowhere. And Moses is far away from Egypt, but God will show up where Moses is. Now, I've come to talk to somebody tonight, somebody, wherever you are tonight, somebody who is far from the palace, far from your past. You think you've ran from God. You're in a dead place. You're no longer in the place of growth. You're in a place where it seems as if there's nothing growing in your life. But I come to tell you tonight that wherever you are, God will meet you there. Maybe you used to be surrounded by harvest and now everything is bare. You used to have a better life, but now you're life is full of bitterness you're in a place where you don't want to deal with nobody you don't want to deal with heartaches and heartbreaks but God will meet you wherever you are because no matter where you are tonight God can show up matter of fact I want to suggest that, that sometimes God allows us to go to the wilderness in order to meet us in a dead place because sometimes it takes for us living in a dead place in order to experience a living God. Could it be tonight that you are where you are? Because God wants to bring you closer to him. 
Could it be that though you thought you were running away from God, you were really running into the plan of God? You didn't plan it, but in God's providential, sovereign plan of your life, God wanted to meet you at a place where you will know him. God shows up tonight in the wilderness, on the backside of the desert, in Midian, on Mount Horeb, because God wanted Moses to know that wherever you are, I can meet you in that place. And he has a track record. Don't, don't just believe me. He, he shows up to Abraham on Mount Sinai. He met Jacob at Bethel. He, he met Joseph in a pit in a prison. He met Samson tied to a pillar under the temple. He met Daniel in a den of lions. He met three Hebrew boys in the fiery furnace. He met Saul on his road to Damascus. He met Mary in her womb and he met Jesus in a borrowed tomb wherever you are tonight. God can show up. Made the psalmist says, where can I go from your spirit? What can I flee from your presence? If I sin into heaven, you're there. If I make my bed in hell, you're there. If I take the wings of the morning, dwell in the most other parts of the sea, there your hand shall lead me and your hand shall guide me. There is no place out of the sovereign control of God where God can meet you in your life. Not only does text show us that, that God shows up in unexpected places. The text also teaches us that God shows up in unexpected forms. In other words, God will show up in a place that you've never seen him in before. But God will also show up in a way you've never experienced him before. God wants Moses' attention. And so the Bible says the way God shows up to Moses, God shows up in a bush that is on fire. And Moses doesn't know that God has anything to do with it. Only thing Moses knows is that there is a bush on fire and it's not burning up. That there's a bush on fire. There's nothing strange about a bush being on fire. But Moses notices that though the bush is on fire, it's not being consumed. And Moses looks at the bush and Moses says there's something strange going on. That there's something abnormal about this bush. There's something supernatural about this bush. I've been on the mountaintop before. I've been where bushes are on fire before. But Moses says there's something different about this bush. Because God had to do something supernatural. God had to do something abnormal to get Moses' attention. I can't help but wonder tonight. Text doesn't tell me, but I can't help but wonder how many times God has tried to get the attention of Moses with the normal things. I mean, I, it, text doesn't say this is the only time God has tried to get his attention, but I just kind of wonder how many times God has tried to get him in his everyday life, in the field of a shepherd, in the place of a husband. How many times have God tried to show himself to Moses in the normalcy of life? But Moses is like us. Sometimes we'll miss God in the normal things in life. And so God has to do something supernatural. God has to do something abnormal. God has to do something powerful in order for us to look at God. Because sometimes it's hard to see God when everything in your life is normal. Matter of fact, somebody can testify. The only reason why you started coming to church is because some stuff in your life started happening abnormally. If you would have never lost that job, if you would have never got out of that marriage, if your children would have never walked away from you, if you would have never failed out of school, if people wouldn't have started bullying you, if you wouldn't have got in trouble with the police, whatever it is, sometimes the abnormalities of life draw us to God. So God said, I got to do something abnormal. I got to do something supernatural in order to get Moses' attention. Moses looks, and the Bible says that Moses sees something spectacular. I like the language of the text. The text says that not only does Moses look at it, Moses looks, and then he looks again. 
he looks at it, but it's something so special that Moses has to take a second look. I want to ask you tonight, how many times has God made you take a second look? What does God have to do in your life in order to get you to look at him again? He's showing up, but you're glancing. He's right in front of us, but we're passing him by. What does God have to do in your life? In order to get you to take a second look. Moses sees the fire. Fire has Moses' attention. But God just doesn't want his attention. God wants his affection. Moses is looking at the fire. But the Bible says that when he looks at the fire, he starts to draw closer to the fire. He walks Closer to the fire. Why? Because when God has our attention, God ought to get our affection. And what is the affection of God? When we have God's affection, when God has our affection, it ought to make us draw closer to God. You know, that's what worship is. Worship just ain't looking at God. I mean, you don't want to be in no relationship. Somebody say, I see you. No, no, no. I, I want more than your attention. I want your affection. I want more than your look. I want your love. Moses says, I see the fire, but the fire has my attention and my affection because I'm getting closer. God says, I want you to love me so that when you come to church, you just can't help but lift up your hands. I, I, I want you to love me so that, that when you taste my goodness, you just can't help but say thank you. I want you to love me so that you just can't look at me without worshiping me. Because whenever I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, I draw closer. Listen, that's why I don't pump and prime people. Some, somebody ought not to have to make you lift your hands. They ought not to have to make you worship. They ought not to have to make you come to church. Because whenever God gets your attention and has your affection, you ought to want to be wherever God is. Moses gets close to God. But the reason why God wants them close is because God has something to say. And beloved, there are some things God won't yell out. There are some things God will whisper. And you can't hear the whisper of God unless you're close to God. God said, Moses, I, I want you to come closer because I'm not going to yell this out. Sometimes God wants to whisper something to us. Maybe the night, the reason why the enemy is fighting you so hard is because you've been waiting for God to yell when God is trying to whisper. The reason why there's so much pain between you and your parents is, is because you've been waiting on God's yell and God has been trying to whisper. Maybe the reason why there's so much trouble and turmoil in your life is because you've been waiting for God to yell and God is trying to whisper. And the only way you can hear the whisper of God is if you're close to God. Close to God in prayer. Close to God in worship. Close to God in praise. Close to God in thanksgiving. Will you get close? Moses is close. God, God tells him, Moses, listen, you just can't approach me like you approach everything else. So Moses, if you're going to get close to me, Moses, I, I've got to tell you, you got to take off your sandals because you're not dealing with your normal stuff. Mo Moses, if, if what you see is really striking your heart, I, I want you to know there has to be a change. You can't come to me like anything else. Moses, take off your shoes because the ground that you're standing on 
is holding the ground. Listen, whenever you're in the presence of God, whenever God gets your attention, you better know that everything in your life is getting ready to change because you're not dealing with the mundane and unholy things of the world. We're dealing with the holy God. When Isaiah says, when I saw the Lord, when King Isaiah died, he was high and lifted up. He was holy because his train filled the temple because God ain't like anything else. God is holy. And the reason why God is holy is because God wants to reveal himself to us. God tells Moses, said, Moses, I, I wanted your attention. I, I wanted you on the mountain because I wanted you to know who I am. And tonight, that's the only reason why God wants your attention. The reason why God shows himself in our lives is because God wants us to know who he is. See, we don't know who God is unless God reveals himself. Matter of fact, it's called self-revelation that God reveals himself to us. We don't know God by nature. We don't know God by philosophy. We don't know God by reason or science. We know God because God draws us closer. And in the intimate moment and in time with God, God reveals himself through his word and through his personality. He says, Moses, come close because I want you to know who I am. Let me get out of here. Moses, Moses I, I want you to know that I just didn't get on the scene. He said, Moses, I, I want you to know that I'm the God of your forefathers. He says, I, I'm the God of Abraham. He says, I'm the God of Isaac. And it says, I'm the God of Jacob. He said, I, I want you to know that, that Moses, though you are a new character in the story, he says, I, I, I want you to know that I am the one that wrote the book. And it said, Moses, I want you to know that I am the one that have been orchestrating your life behind the scenes. Yes, sir, uh, when Pharaoh wanted to kill every firstborn, I'm the one that told your mother to put you in the water. I've been working behind the scenes. Yes, I'm the one that told Potiphar's daughter to raise you as own. I've been working behind the scenes. I'm the one, yes, alone. Yeah, that told, yes, the king. Uh, to pay your mama uh, for raising you <laughs> because though you thought you were running away uh, I am the one uh, uh, that's been orchestrating your life uh, behind the scenes uh, you ran away uh, but Moses I wanted to bring you uh, to a dead place uh, I wanted to bring you uh, to a wilderness uh, so you'll know I'm not just a God of palatial abodes but I'm the God of nothing and nowhere I am the I am I spoke something into being I said let there be light and there was light he said Moses I want you to know who I am but not only did he want him to know who he was but he wanted Moses to know uh, who Moses was he says Moses uh, you are mine I wanted you uh, to lead sheep in the middle of nowhere because I wanted to train you to lead my people and if you could never uh, lead sheep on the back side of the desert you can never lead my people out of Egypt. Moses, I wanted you to know who you were. If you couldn't stand the summer in the desert, you'll never understand how God will make you go around in circles for 40 years and never get anywhere. Moses, 
I wanted you to come up on the mountain and see the supernatural so that whenever you come in contact with obstacles you will know that you serve a God that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all you can ask or think you thought you were running away but Moses I was trying to get your attention and is there anybody here tonight you've been running away I said is there anybody here you've been running far from God but God says you're right where I want you I want you to know who I am I'm Jehovah Jireh I'm Jehovah of Rapha I'm the Alpha and the Omega I'm the beginning and the end I'm the first and the last I've got something for you to do I got some doors that I'm gonna walk you through I got new heights higher heights and deeper depths somebody here tonight I want you to know the Lord ah, the Lord he wants your attention he wants you tonight to get close in his presence he wants you tonight to get ignited get close to the fire because I've got something for you to do but I got good news Moses he led the people out of bondage but we got somebody greater than Moses he wasn't on Mount Horeb but thanks be to God God he showed up on Mount Calvary it wasn't with fire but it was a with nails they nailed his hands they nailed his feet yes they did he died didn't he die but early 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 God did some amazing early Sunday morning God got up with all power in his hand and he told them if I be lifted up if I be lifted up I'll draw all men unto me is there anybody here God got your attention well if he got your attention tonight lift up your hands if he got your attention lift up your voice if he got your attention tell the Lord thank you he wants your affection he wants your thanks he wants your praise say yes 